Welcome to a dev talk about Trash Patrol. I'm Hannah and today I'll be introducing our game and sharing our thoughts about the game development process. Trash Patrol is a cooperative multiplayer game in which you break into a house and steal items together with your raccoon friends. Before you can put the items into the trash can, you need to wash them and blow dry them using the clouds nearby. To get to higher locations, as well as during the washing and drying process, you need a second player to help you out. Also, you need to make sure you don't get squished by the human. It's a super fun and cooperative party game and I can't wait to show off what we got in store. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's start a new game. Here at our character selection screen, you can already get a glimpse of the life of our playable characters, the raccoons. As you can see, you can play together with up to three other friends. Each player can personalize their raccoons with many different colors and customize them with various accessories. Whether a potted plant or a squeaky duck, a cool hat or a queen or king's crown, your raccoon can wear it on the hat to be unique or even to match the looks of your friend's characters. Our favorites are definitely the cyan and orange colors and the grouchy glasses and the banana. Once everyone is ready, you can press start and the heist can begin. During the loading screen, you'll be reminded of your mission to find specific items inside the house, wash and blow dry them so that they are clean and able to be handed into the teleporting trash can. Don't forget that the human is able to steal back items that you already collected, so you have to make sure to keep him away from the trash can, as well as from your teammates. If you want to, you can also use our venting system and throw other players into the vents for faster travel and more strategic options. Hmm. So, just before starting the game, the camera will circle above the level for the players to get an overview of it and some time to make plans if they want to. Furthermore, you can already see the main enemy, the human, doing his daily chores. Check out the clouds flying around. They are used for cleaning the items. Players have to make sure to know where the clouds are located. They are the most important tools, which move around constantly, prompting everyone to change strategies throughout the game. Once the players press start, the game begins and the camera will start following the raccoons around. First things first, the raccoons are on their way to look for the first designated items to steal. On the top left are the first three items already on display, now it is up to the players to find them. They need to help one another by throwing each other up to higher grounds, into the vents or even distracting the human while stealing the items. If the players need help finding the object, the select button can be pressed to highlight them for a few seconds. The raccoons also need each other when it comes to cleaning. One player has to hold the blue clouds hose while activating it, and the second player has to hold the dirty item. After that, they need to repeat that same process at the white clouds grow dryer, so they can hand in the fully cleaned item. The teleporting black hole trash can is the final spot for the items to be put in. All of that has to be done while making sure the human doesn't see or catch them. If the human caught the player, they will respawn after 5 seconds. The enemy will also get angrier over time, making him faster during the game. Worst of all, the human is also able to get back some of the stolen items by diving headfirst into the trash can to retrieve them. So, the players have to make sure not to completely ignore him, while also making sure they are not in his path. Now, let's continue to our individual team members and what their tasks looked like. Hmm. So I was responsible for the whole project together with Jan. I came up with the general idea and together we all made the concept come to life. In the beginning we had quite a different take on what we wanted the game to be like. For instance, we wanted to have like a balancing system in which the player had to balance all of the items they wanted to carry and steal. That turned out somewhat difficult and as most of the feedback told us, it's quite boring and annoying. 
So we changed the mechanics again and again and came up with new ideas and ended up with a current concept, having a washing mechanic by using two constantly moving clouds above our level. Other than doing some management for our team, I was also responsible for user interface and graphic design for our game. The user interface can already be seen on screen, like the hut, the item icons, the timer on the bottom left, and the human's mood. The icons on the top left indicate which items are left to steal as of now, as well as whether the items are dirty, wet, or clean. Once the items have been cleaned, they can be put in the black hole trash can. I also designed the logo for our project, as well as everything marketing related like posters and social media. Hi, I'm Jan, and I was the lead programmer and scrum master of our game. I was responsible for the items and the clouds, developed the camera system, and did the implementation of our recruits. Also, I implemented the user interface, which was designed by Hannah. One part I'm especially proud of is the implementation of our raccoons. Raccoon bonds have ability components for everything they can do. For example, the throw ability handles everything around throwing an item. The slapping ability will notify all raccoons in front of the character that it got slapped. Using a final state machine with hierarchical states, the raccoons can do everything you can see. According to the current state, the input is used to call functionalities of the abilities and calculate the next state if it needs to change. Everything is event-based, so it's easy to extend and modify our player characters. Because of that, many changes were unproblematic to solve, like removing the balancing feature we once had. <laughs> Hey, I'm Nessie, and I was the level designer for the lead and lighting artist of Trash Patrol. Our level changed a lot throughout the developing stages and concept alterations of our game. We've put an emphasis on a non-conventional house layout to support our concepts and established a design that complements our chaotic gameplay. It offers space and possibilities to avoid the human, while also creating challenges where teamwork is in demand. Other than creating a level and plastic furnishing assets, I also developed the look of the human and the raccoon as well as some fun player customization assets. For example, the rubber duck or the croucher classes. It was definitely an interesting challenge to prepare the assets for a top-down perspective with recognizable silhouettes while coming up with a fitting 3D look that ties everything together. For the lighting, I was working closely with our shader and VFX artist Jeanette to create the atmosphere and look that we strived for, making the mouse out of Unreal's post processing workflow. Mm. Yo, I'm Marcel, and I was responsible for the rigging and animation of the characters, the clouds, and the environment. The raccoon was one of the hardest challenges for me, as I never really worked on quadruped beings before. The rig of the raccoon was even tweaked so many times that I completed the final version on one week before releasing the game on HIO. The implementation of the raccoon animations I did together with Jan and the human ones with Kerstin. Also, the clouds are the only other entities to actually possess a rig as their movement and bubbling is rather complex. For the environment on the other hand, where most of the furniture jitters upon running against or slapping them, I used curves to drive the translation and rotation of each object. Additionally to the animations of the raccoon, I also made some poses for the head so that the players can control where they look in the selection screen and on the winning screen. In the end, I'm satisfied with most animations and it was a great amount of fun working together with everyone. Would do again 11 out of 10. Hi, my name is Kerstin and I was mainly responsible for the human's artificial intelligence. This included the navigation system, the perception, the memory, as well as the behavior of the AI. Tying those four components together and creating an overall behavior that is as natural as possible while not being too demanding for the player was probably the most challenging part of this whole project for me. Furthermore, I was responsible for implementing the music and the sound effects. This task required close cooperation with our sound designer Lou. He provided all the sound files and integrations needed, which I invoked in the code. This seamless collaboration resulted in the awesome audio one can hear while playing our game. Hey, 
I'm Jeanette, and I'm our team's VFX lead, shader specialist, and general 3D artist. My main responsibility was creating all our game's visual effects. What I enjoyed most while working on our VFX was the challenge to come up with the different techniques to achieve the stylized feel we're aiming for, without overshooting the limitations given by such a look. Also, for some particles, like our blow dryer's tornado, or the hose's water jet, which had to be scaled dynamically, I had to make sure that the effects would also work on shorter distances. In addition, my work consisted of creating various shaders, to provide us with the ability to fully adjust our game's look and feel to your liking. To accomplish the style we are going for, the most important shaders I worked on were the cell and outline shaders for our post-processing effects, as well as the environment's gradient shader that adds some additional visual interest. Further, because our collectibles have to dynamically switch between being dirty, wet and dry, we were in need of a shader that helps to indicate the current state of those items. Of course, I also worked on the raccoon's colors and other 3D art related things, like modeling different pieces of furniture and accessories. The Sound of Trash Patrol My name is Lucas, I'm the sound designer and music creator of Trash Patrol. My responsibilities in this project comprised creating and editing audio assets, searching for the right music, establishing working audio systems, as well as implementing all those contents into the audio engine. Working with such an organized team was a great experience and I'm very grateful for the collaboration with Kerstin, who managed a lot of audio coding during the production process. For me, this was quite a fun project to work on and a great team to work with. To sum up our project and main goal, we wanted to create a fun cooperative multiplayer game with tons of emphasis on bringing the players together while playing adorable little raccoons. And after like a year of development so far, I think I can speak for the team when I say we made quite a great job and we're super happy with our outcome. So what comes next? Since we're still not done with our education, we'll be focusing on polishing this project as well as add some customization. And if we're able to, we would also love to add more content for the game. So once we're free to work on it again, we'll be excited to continue. Thank you for watching our Dev Talk video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to check out Trash Patrol for yourself by going to itch.io and downloading it for free. You can find a link in the video description and thanks again, we'll keep you updated for the Polish game.